Viewer discretion is advised. June 1941. Germany launches an invasion of the Soviet Union, an offensive dubbed Operation Barbarossa. The Soviet Union and National Socialist Third Reich signed a non-aggression pact uh, before the war began, but it ceased to be convenient very quickly for Nazi Germany. The Soviet Union sat upon the world's greatest oil resources for that time period. Nazi Germany had by that point realized, you know what, we're going to need that oil for ourselves, and we don't want to have to buy it. We're going to take it. What could possibly go wrong? The invasion is a huge success at first. The Germans, in the summer weather, ride across the plains in relative ease. But as they reach the end of the year and the weather begins to turn nasty, they have a harder time making progress, yet they do reach the gates of Moscow by December of 1941. Right at about that same time, the enemy has marshaled his strength, and the Soviet Union begins to fight back with ever-increasing strength. Caught in an impossible stalemate and running low on supplies, the invading Nazis are about to find themselves in the crosshairs of a terrifying new Soviet weapon of shock and awe, the Katusha. The Soviets roll out this new secret weapon, this battery-firing rocket launcher that takes great effect against German fighting forces. You would just hope that you were a lottery winner during that attack and that you wouldn't experience a direct hit. Because if you did, your chances of survival were almost zero. The Katusha system is called the BM-13. That's the official designation of the rail launching system that was then mounted on a vehicle. The system itself was a launching platform that had 16 separate rails, and it would therefore have a battery firing capability of 16 rockets simultaneously. Each M13 rocket is two and a half feet long and weighs 93 pounds. These weren't massive rockets by any means. It was the number of them that made the difference. It was more a question of quantity over quality. The Katusha system is recognized as being an area weapon. You're not sniping with it. You're firing a barrage of Katushas at a certain beaten zone. Within that beaten zone, you're going to tear everything up. This diabolical weapon has one more chilling feature. The Katusha had a powerful psychological effect because the sound moved faster than the weapon. And so the people on the receiving end would hear this screeching, whirring sound, and they would know what they were about to be in for. You can hear just this sort of whoosh, but then a kind of screech as it reached the target. It really was so frightening that it made it difficult to stand your ground. If you heard the screeching sound of Katusha, the hardened veterans would disappear very quickly because they would all flee for cover. And that had a powerful intimidating effect against people who were new to the battlefield. The Russians were giving the Germans a bit of their own medicine because in the Blitzkrieg, the Germans had understood the the terror that comes with screeching sounds from their Stuka dive bombers. What the Russians did was use that practice against them. But it's the weapon's appearance that lends itself to a twisted new nickname. Many people thought when they looked at the configuration of these tubes on the back of these trucks that it looked like a collection of organ pipes. In a kind of battlefield gallows humor, they gave it this nickname. Stalin's organ. Stalin's organ stops the Nazis dead in their tracks, contributing to the loss of over 250,000 of Hitler's soldiers during the Battle of Moscow. The Germans are getting pummeled over and over again by the M13 rockets that are fired by the Katusha. The Germans don't like it because it sucks. Katusha rockets truly worried the Germans because they didn't have a defense against them, and they had nothing like it to fire back. When you were in an assault by these Katusha rockets, there was no place to go. They would cover a large area of the battlefield at once and leave a lot of dead bodies. The lethal rocket is so effective, the Soviets ramp up production, ordering 10,000 more 
during the course of the war. Russians just won't let up. They keep coming, coming, and coming. And they sow such fear that almost all the Nazi leadership run to the West, right back to the borders of Germany, rather than face the Russians with their katushas on the East. But back in the Western theater, the Nazis have their own top secret mega weapon in the works. The Schwerer Gustav. The Schwerer Gustav was an enormous weapon. It was the kind of gun that you would be frightened just to see at a distance. It's so enormous that it's going to have to be mounted on railway tracks, specially built for it, to work. This gigantic Nazi cannon will become the most notorious railway gun in history. The weapon weighs 1,350 tons, about the same as six Boeing 747 jets. It fires 15,000 pound shells at a range of 29 miles. Schwerer Gustav was not just a powerful weapon. It was a way of advertising to the world, don't with us. But by the time the weapon is finally completed in 1941, it's too late. The entire reason that Krupp designs this weapon is so that Germany will have something that can defeat the French Maginot Line. And in the end, it's not firepower that does that, because German units simply maneuver around the Maginot Line from its less heavily defended northern frontier. As a result, the Schwerer Gustav is put on the back burner. But the time and resources spent constructing this colossal weapon will not go to waste. By the autumn of 1941, Soviet forces held out at the city of Sebastopol. This leads to an eight-month-long siege operation during which all manner of German firepower was brought to bear against Soviet forces in the city. And that firepower eventually would include Schwerer Gustav. Sebastopol, if you think about it, is quite a long way to take that gun. It's well over a 1,000 miles. It took 25 freight cars to transport the various component assets of Schwerer Gustav. So it was its own train just to get there, only to then be assembled so that it could fire some shots. Once in place, the Gustav fires 47 rounds, laying waste to various targets throughout the city. Hardened underground ammunition storage facilities, troop concentrations at railroad marshalling yards completely destroyed. Ships that are riding in the harbor are destroyed by the concussive force of AP rounds that are going off. Even though it was very difficult to fire and to put into place, the Germans decided it was worth it for its fear factor, for the ability to strike terror. This seemed like the most super weapon of all. Schwerer Gustav was extremely effective in use during the siege of Sebastopol. The only problem is that the accuracy is falling off dramatically and much faster than expected, to such an extent that after they had fired 47 rounds, they realized that we might as well not even continue. The gun is so labor intensive, requiring thousands to move it and maintain it. But the really glaring problem with it was that such a big gun can be seen from the air for miles. So the gun was a sitting duck to any kind of air attack. In the end, it's not a very useful weapon at all. It looks impressive, but because it wasn't practical, it was never going to be effective. Despite the Nazi cannon's flaws, by the end of the battle, the Soviet army is annihilated suffering over 115,000 casualties. After the siege of Sebastopol, and Schwerer Gustav never fires another shot in anger. To prevent the technology from falling into Allied hands, the Germans ultimately destroy the weapon in 1945. It's interesting that the Germans felt they needed to be destroyed. It was one of the darkest of all the super weapons of the Nazi regime, because at a distance, it would frighten the hell out of you. But it still begs the question of who would want to copy such an impractical weapon. <laughs>